Hello and welcome to A Math With Harry Lesson. In this video, we're going to be having a look at quartic graphs. In the last video, we had a look at cubic graphs, and cubics is when your highest power of your equation is a 3. So you've got something in the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. I think I said that right. So you'll have an x cubed term, a squared term, an x term, and then a constant. A quartic, and it takes its name from quarter, is when you've got the highest power being a 4. So the general form of a quartic graph here is in the form, and I will write it in red, y is equal to ax to the 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. Okay, we've got a, uh, a power 4 term here. We don't really have a name for a power 4 term, we just call it x to the 4. But then here we've got a cube term, a squared, an x term and a constant. And a, b, c, d and e are constants, just like when we've got a, a quadratic or a cubic. We know the values of a, b, c and d, they're constant, the variables are x. Okay, so the general look of a quartic graph is something like this. Now it looks a little bit like an x squared graph, but you can see, and it's not a perfect sketch here, it's just a sketch where we get the idea of what the graph looks like. This could be an example of, and I'll write it in black, y is equal to x to the 4. Or any multiple of that, it could be y is equal to 2x to the 4, y is equal to um, 100x to the 4, I don't know, I've got no scaling on my graph, we just know that it's some positive x, uh, or, sorry, positive quartic graph. Now, like I said, it looks a little bit like x squared, but here we've got more of kind of a, a bottom on the graph. It's not really like that. If I compared it with an x squared graph, an x squared graph would look like that. We can see a quartic graph. We'll write that on y is equal to x squared. We can see it's quite distinctively different here. We've got more of a flat shape at the bottom, okay? So that is just a normal quartic graph when we've kind of got no terms here, okay? Okay, so that's the general shape of a quartic. But what happens, and I'm just going to get rid of those there for the minute. What happens if we have A, B, C, D and E? We have all of these terms. Well, with a cubic, what we had is something that had sort of these turning points. And a cubic had two turning points. A quadratic has one turning point. So a quartic, uh, yes, sorry, I thought I said the wrong thing. A quartic is going to have three turning points because it's going to have four roots. So we can see that here. Now this is just an example of a quartic and it's a positive quartic here, okay? This is a positive quartic. So a is greater than zero. A can either be less than zero or it can be greater than zero. It can't be zero because if it is, then this term would disappear and then we would be left with a cubic, but we want a quartic. So we look something like this. We can see these yellow points here are the roots. And we can see that, well, we've got, how many turning points did I say? We've got three because we have a one less turning point than the highest power, okay? It's a little bit confusing to say, a little bit confusing to get your head round, but a quartic will always have three turning points. We can see there's a turning point there, a turning point there, and a turning point there, because what happens with a positive quartic, it will follow this kind of shape if it's not the general U shape. If it's positive, it will start up here, it will come down, it will pass through this root, it will then come down, and then it needs to go through this point here, the turning point, so that it can come back up to then pass through this second root. It will come up, have a turning point, come back down, pass through this root, go all the way down, then go back up so it can pass through the fourth and final root and then shoot all the way back up. And we can see here that our, qu our quartic does not finish there. It continues like that forever, but I'm just showing the red part of the graph, okay? So that is a positive. And I'll just put on here quickly that those green points 
are turning points, okay? Now we can see on the left, this general uh, quartic, we've got a root here, and we will always have four roots. So here we have four repeated roots, and we'll get onto an example in a minute. There's four repeated roots there. And also that is a turning point as well, because we're coming down, we're passing through the root, and then it's a turning point because we were coming down here, we need to then come back up, okay? So we go through the turning point and then head back up. And again, this graph continues up like that. Okay, so what happens if we've got a negative A? So if A is not greater than zero, A must then be less than zero, and it looks something like this, okay? So what we have, and I'll just uh, track the line if you like, we start down here, we come up, we pass through this point that's marked yellow, that's one of our roots. We then need to come back down to pass through this root here, and that is a repeated root. We have that root twice. How do we know that? Because in the last video, I said that if we've got a repeated root, we, well, here we're coming down to the root, we come down and then we kind of flick back off. So we come down and then come back up, okay? We're coming back up, turning point here, and then we're going to the next root. And there are three roots, but we've actually got four because one of the roots is repeated. So again, here's our roots, and then we have, well, we've got three turning points. We've got a turning point there, a turning point there, and a turning point there, okay? And I suppose there as well is a turning point as well. So turning points are in green. Now, don't worry too much about turning points for the minute. It's just nice to introduce them there. Okay, now this is a negative, so I'll write at the bottom, A is less than zero. Okay, let's have a look at examples. So, example one, we've got two parts, and we just want to sketch the following quartics. We want this quartic first, and then we want to sketch this one, okay? Note how we've got a squared here, so we've got the same bracket twice, so what does that mean? Have a think about that. Even if you just think about that, pause the video, don't actually attempt the question if you don't want to, but pause and have a go if you want to, and then press play, and we'll work through the answer. Okay, hopefully you've had a go. Let's see whether your graph looks correct. So, the first thing I'm going to do is just like with cubics, I'm going to set the graph equal to zero to find the roots. So let's do the roots first, and that's when y is equal to zero, because we're on the x-axis for the roots, and on the x-axis we know that y is equal to zero. So we're going to have this. We're going to have x plus one, times x plus 2, times x minus 1, times x minus 2, is equal to 0. And then, just like when we have two brackets equal to 0 for quadratics, or three brackets equal to 0 for cubics, here we've got 4, we're going to set each bracket equal to 0. So, that tells me x plus 1 can be equal to 0, or x plus 2, and I'll write or actually, or x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. And then from each of those equations, I get x is minus 1, this second one, x minus 2, this one is x is equal to 1, and that one is x is equal to 2. So, we've got four values of x, and I'll highlight them in grey, those four values of x are where y is zero. So those four values of x are my roots. So now all I'm going to do is sketch this graph. So here is my graph, and I'm gonna have something like that. This is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and x is equal to minus one. I'm just going to move that axis over a little bit. X is equal to minus one is about there. And I will uh, maybe highlight that one in, uh, well, we'll keep that one in grey, actually, so I've got enough colours. We'll highlight this one in yellow, we'll do that one in red, and we'll do that one in green, so we can colour code our roots. If we put on x is minus 2, oops, x is minus 2 is there, 
that is the yellow root. And then we've got x is 1 and x is 2. So it's going to be about there. There's 1 and then there's 2. So there's the red root and there's the green root. And now all we need to think is, well, is A positive or is A negative? We can see that I expand these four brackets to get something in the form AX to the 4, BX cubed, uh, CX squared plus DX plus E. And if I expand that, I'm going to get my uh, X to the 4 term by multiplying all of these X's together. And we can see if we multiply all of those X's together, that term is going to be positive. It's just going to be X to the 4. Four. So we've got a positive term, or a positive A, so our graph is going to start up here and follow this shape, passing through the roots that we need to pass through here. So, well, I'll draw it in blue, and we're going to come down, pass through minus 2, but then I need to pass through minus 1. So I'm going to come down, and I'm going to have a turning point, and come back up to pass through there. Then I'm going to go all the way up, and again, I'm going to come back down, so I can pass through the root at 1, and then come down, then back up, so I can pass through 2, and then my graph is completed. Of course, it continues on forever and ever up there, but we only need to sketch a little part of it so we can see the general shape. Now, we haven't finished there yet, because whenever you do a sketch, it's useful to show the intersections with the axes. So here are the roots. We now just need to plot that point there. And that point there is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, and I'll uh, highlight this in a different colour, we'll go with this orange. We can see there is the y-intercept. That is when x is equal to zero, because we are on the, uh, the y-axis. So if we set x equal to 0, we're going to have 0 plus 1. So y will be equal to 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 2. So y will be 1 times 2 times minus 1 times minus 2. That's going to be, well, we've got a positive, a negative times a negative will give me a positive. And so we're just going to get y is equal to 4, okay? Because that's just the same as 2 times 2. So y is equal to 4 up here. And then I can write that on as my y-intercept. And that is all you needed to do for part A. Part B was a little bit different. Part B, we had a repeated root. And the reason we had a repeated root was because of this squared bracket there. What that is really saying is x times x plus 2 times x plus 2 times 3 minus x. And be careful with that bracket there. When you set that bracket equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to 3. So if we do that, if we set uh, the whole equation equal to zero, each bracket can be equal to zero. So we'll get x is equal to zero, x is equal to minus two, again, x is equal to minus two, or x is equal to three. This comes from that bracket equal to zero, which is just x equals zero. This comes from that bracket is equal to zero. This comes from that bracket equal to zero, and then that comes from that bracket equal to zero. So these are my roots, because what we did is we said here, y is equal to zero, make that look more like an arrow. There, y was equal to zero, and then we got four values of x for where y is equal to zero. And when y is equal to zero, we are on the x-axis, and so these are the four roots. So, let's sketch what that's going to look like. We're going to have a graph that looks something like this, and I'm going to sketch my axes something like that. We can move them if we need to. And plotting on the four roots. We've got one root at zero. We've got another at minus two. We've got another at minus two. They're both at minus two there. And then we've got one at three. So it's going to be something like that. Maybe we'll move that three over a little bit. Okay, it's just a sketch. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So that root came from the grey one, that root came from the yellow and the red one, and then that root came from the green one, okay? 
So now all we need to think is, well, is my x going to be, or my a, sorry, the coefficient of the x to the 4, is that going to be positive or negative? So a less than 0, or is a going to be greater than 0? And that will help me determine where I start my graph, which shape is it going to have? Well, we can do that just by multiplying all of the x's together. We can see here that my x to the 4 term is going to come from multiplying x by x by x by minus x. And if you're unsure, multiply all of these brackets out, get it into your general form here, and then see whether a is positive or negative. I can see here I've got negative x, so that is going to be the negative version of the graph. So it's going to follow this shape here. And we've got a repeated root, so it's going to look something like that. So returning back to the graph, we can see that we're going to have a negative shaped graph. So if we start down here, I need to, well, first of all, I need to think, where am I going to have my repeated root? I'm going to have it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and then I'm not going to cross through that point there because it's a repeated root. So actually, maybe I should start my graph a little bit more like that. I'm going to have it crossing through that root, not going up. It needs to bounce back down. Then it's going to pass through that root because that's just a root on its own. And then it's going to kind of come something like that and then come back down so we can pass through that root and then head off all the way down there. Okay, so we've got this shape, it's negative, so it's this kind of shape. We've got a repeated root here, because of this squared, we had x equals minus 2 twice. So we're going to come up, hit that repeated root, but not go through it, because it's repeated. So bounce back off it, come down, then head back up to pass through the origin, which is our root x equals 0. Then come back up, and then all the way back down to pass through that root there, and then head off. So that's what B should look like, okay? And we don't need to put a y-intercept on here. I could change that to be a coordinate if I like, because if we pass through the origin, that means our y-intercept is zero. Okay, the final example for this question, we are told that we have got a graph of, well, it's just a general quartic graph here, and that's drawn below. And we can see, and I've missed off, oh no, we've not got an A here, it's just a 1, so B, C, D, and E are real constants, okay? They're real constants. Don't worry too much about them being real, they're just numbers that we know, okay? Well, do we know them? We're actually being asked to find them, and we don't have an A here, so I can get rid of that. We're being asked to find the values of B, C, D, and E. So in other words, we're being asked to find the coefficients of our x cubed term, our x squared, our x term, and then our constant. So pause and have a go if you want to, and then we'll work through the answer when you press play. Okay, let's see how we tackle this question. We know what the roots are. They are on the graph, and we can see that, well, they're all labelled. And what we can do with that is kind of work backwards. In these examples here, we were given an equation and we worked out the roots. And we worked out the roots by setting each bracket equal to zero. So I can see that I can form this equation by setting up, or I can form the equation by the roots by setting these brackets up. x plus two times x plus one times x minus two times x minus 3. And I can see that that is what y is going to equal. Because when y is equal to 0, each of these brackets can be equal to 0, just like in the other examples. What I get is x is equal to minus 2 from that bracket, x is equal to minus 1 from that bracket, x is equal to 2 from this bracket, and then x is equal to 3 from that bracket, okay? So I can see that those correspond to my roots I just had here. So we can kind of put our um, equation of the graph to find the values. We can put the equation of our graph in factorized form. And all we do is just take the opposite sign because we set each bracket equal to zero to give us this, x is equal to minus two. So we need the opposite sign in the bracket. OK, and then all I need to do is, well, I've got it factorised. I need to get it in this form. So I just need to expand the brackets. So we're just expanding kind of two sets of double brackets here. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand x plus 2 and x plus 1, okay? Those two brackets come from the first two there. So expanding those two will have x squared plus x plus 2x plus 2, okay? And that then gives me x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, just get rid of that y for the minute, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to expand the last two brackets. When I do that, I'll have x minus 2 times x minus 3. That will be x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus 6. That is then x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay. So, what we had is, well, these were the red brackets. We had these two things multiplied together up here. So, what I need to do is multiply my expanded versions together. So, y is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. And if I expand that, well, we'll have x squared times x squared, which will give me a quartic, and it will give me this form here. And then I can just read off my values of b, c, d, and e. So what we're going to have is, well, let's expand it here. We'll write y is equal to, we'll do x squared first. So we'll have x to the 4 minus 5x cubed plus 6x squared. Then we'll do the 3x, so plus 3x cubed minus 15x squared. Just checking that's right. And then plus 18x. And then the 2 will give me plus 2x squared minus 10x plus, uh, plus 12. Okay? And then I could just collect like terms. So let's look. We've only got one quartic there, or x to the 4 term. So we'll have y is still x to the 4. Then if we have a look at our squared terms, we've got minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2. So that's going to give me minus 2x cubed. Then we have got here our squared terms. So 6x squared minus 15x squared plus 2. So what's that going to be? Well, 6 minus 15 is... Uh, minus 9 plus 2 is then minus 7. Okay, then let's think about our x terms. We'll highlight those in green. We've got 18 minus 10 will give me plus 8x. And then we've got a plus 12 on the end. So hopefully, if I've done all of that right, those are our values of B, C, D, and E. So we can just read off the graph. We can say, so b is equal to minus 2, c is equal to minus 7, d is equal to 8, and e is equal to 12, just by comparing it with, and I'll drag this down actually, just by comparing it with this general form, okay? We can kind of bring those together. Comparing there, we get those as our final answers.